Disclaimer. This video contains images of a chicken being processed. It is meant to be a technical guide to educate those processing their own chickens. If you'd like to see our experience with the general process without the technical images, watch this video. So the first step in this process was to remove their food yesterday. So they should have their food removed about 24 hours before they're processed. That way their digestive tract is empty. So yesterday I pulled their food. This took the scalder oddly long to heat up. I think the morning before we didn't learn how long it took to heat up because we were setting everything else up. It took us like three We didn't hours. realize, you know, we started slow processing, so we didn't realize that, that how long this took to get up to temperature. Um, once it got up to temperature, I think, I think she had processed around three or four birds before the plucker was able to work correctly because the, the skin was properly scalded. It probably only took maybe a quarter of the feathers off the chicken. Yeah. And the purpose of the scalder is to loosen the feathers so it's easy to pull out. So the ones that are scalded well but the plucker didn't get all the feathers, it's fine because I can just easily pull them out. But with that not working, it was, I just couldn't do it. I was ripping the skin that I would have to pull so hard and I was only pulling like one or two feathers at a time. So. It only took us about three hours, but I think we have everything set up now. We have a few different stations that we think will work out well how they're set up. We have Matt station over here on the tractor. We have two kill cones that are drilled into a piece of wood here that he put up on the tractor bucket so he could raise it up so he doesn't have to bend over. And there is a half barrel underneath there so that blood can drain down. From there, he'll take the chickens into the scalder and this water is heated. So he'll run that until the feathers start to come out and then come over here to the plucker. And then he'll give it to me at this table and I will start to prepare the chicken and eviscerate it. Once I'm done here at this table, we have our big 21 cubic square foot freezer that we converted. It's a convertible freezer. And we have it as a refrigerator right now. And we have those plastic totes in there filled halfway with water. So once the chicken is completely processed, we can put it in there to rapidly cool their body temperature down.
we moved 13 of the chickens, which is half the amount that we have, up to this little holding pen here. And we're gonna get started. Oh gosh. Okay, so I think. You grab them by the legs and shove them in, right? Legs. There you go. Now, hang it, yep. Yep, and now. You don't, I don't think you have to worry about the, yeah. Well, yeah, it said to make sure the win, wings are pinned so that it doesn't get bruised. Mm. Ooh, you're fat and you, he barely, he's so fat. It'll work. Wow. Okay. okay. I know, fold back the feathers, right? Yeah, let's right. see. We should be able to see blue. It's a so you don't right want to get the trachea or the esophagus. Okay, so you don't want to cut through feathers. Oh right? yeah. So fold them back. So look, we see blue. Uh -huh. We want to get the jugular vein and the carotid artery. Oh, okay. So. Those two? So right here. Oh, and it's soft. Do you feel that? Here I have a chicken restrained in a kill cone. I'm going to put my thumb on the bottom of the beak and my fingers behind the head to restrain the head. Next, I'm going to locate the trachea and the esophagus, which is in the middle of the neck. The carotid artery and the jugular vein are off to the side of the midline, and that's where I want to cut, right above where the jaw is. So you'll feel a squishy part where that jugular vein is, right above where the jawbone is. So I will make a horizontal cut with firm pressure, starting from the midline and pulling across to the side of the head.
So I stick them on their butt and I take the left side of the neck because the crop is on the right side. I want to cut the left side. And I cut that open. Start breaking down the tissue inside. Trying to isolate the neck and move the crop and the trachea out of the way. So I can fold this over and break down those tissues on the other side and then just fold the neck out. So now the crop and the trachea are over here. Now I've isolated the neck. So now I'll get my shears. I'll cut as low as I can. I'll save the neck. So now I need to break down the connective tissue around the crop, which is the hardest part. that off. See, it's nice and empty because they hadn't eaten for now a day and a half, this one. So now I stick my finger in there and break down all that connective tissue around the trachea and the crop. And I go as far and as deep as I can, just scooping around as I go. And I loosen this first before I open the vent. That way, once I open the vent, it's loose enough to pull out. Okay, that's good. So now I will start on the vent. I flip it over so the breast is up. And I grab the loose skin right under that, the end of the breastplate. And I make a, a nick. I don't want to go too far because the intestines are right in there. And I don't want to cut them. It did not go deep enough. So now I will slowly start working my way around to the back of the tail. So I prop it up on the side of the table here and I make little cuts little sweeping cuts. And this in here is the rectum and I don't want to cut that. So as I get closer to the tail you'll be able to see it and you don't want to cut that. So now I'll flip it over and get to the top of the tail. And the preen gland is right here, so I want to cut above that and then start 
carefully cutting the tail. Once I get through the, the once I get through the bone, the rectum is going to be right there. So I can just pull this. flip it over so it's breast up and I put my hand inside and I sweep it around to break down the connective tissue. And I have to get my fingers all the way up into the thorax so that the crop can come out because that's the top of the digestive tract. And then it just all pulls out. So the, hard, the last hard part is getting the lungs out. Looks like I got some of the lung, but the lungs are attached to the, the wall the cavity wall, so I, I just scoop it with my fingers the best I can. Also, need to make sure that the trachea is out. Wait, where's the heart? It's right here. Oh, yep, yeah, the trachea is here. Got the trachea. That's the breathing tube and then I just cut this but I try to keep it long so that it covers the breast. So now I'm going to take, we're going to keep the livers and the neck. So I've just been keeping them on the side of the table here. This green thing is the gallbladder, which you do not want to pop. So I have to carefully remove that from the liver. We can help you. So what'd you do with that stuff? That I put into the trash can that holds the compost compostable material. So all the feathers, the heads, and the rest of the innards are in there that we're not keeping. Okay. So I'm going to rinse my hands. And then I'm going to rinse So I do like to rinse the inside until it drains mostly clear. All right. And there are usually a few more feathers I could probably pick out. Then it's done. And I will put this in the water bath in the refrigerator to chill.